This video is sponsored by Skillshare. Hi everyone, hope you're doing well. I've thought about doing this type of video for a long time on the channel. Now I feel like it's it's time to just talk about it. This is a changing list at all times. I mean, and this is my philosophy about favorite books. Really the books that we love and hold uh, and cherish, they're just kind of the ones that just happen to pass us by at the right time. I'm always gonna talk about books on this channel, always. However, if you do like this kind of sit down talking about books and movies and stuff like that that I used to do that I haven't been doing as much, there's a second channel now. Nadia and I are uh, working on that we made. It's called Woman Carrying Man. Anyways, the first book that I'm talking about is Absalom Absalom. Fun list, right? <laughs> This is required reading for many college students in the United States, but I read this just out of pure fun because I just hate joy. This is a notoriously difficult book, uh, so-called, you know. It reportedly has like the longest English language sentence ever in a book. I'm, I don't know, there's some crazy avant-garde stuff out there. I'm sure that must have been passed by now because this came out in the 1930s. This book is a wild, well, Southern Gothic story about the worst family. <laughs> The worst family. Well, it's about racism above all else. It is a an absolutely disturbing, sad, sick, violent, very melodramatic and moody book told in this hysterical tone. And I don't mean that in like this derogatory way. Like it, it, it has this sustained hysteria that is just magnified, just this intensity. At the heart of it, it's about Thomas Sutpen, who is basically this devil. He is this being of pure evil who is carving this empire. It's sort of a, a spiritual sequel to The Sound of the Fury, but you don't have to read The Sound of the Fury to get this book. Sometimes it'll just turn into italics. You know, people focus on Faulkner as like a stylist and stuff, but he has some of the best, most engaging and, and insane stories uh, ever. Check this out if you like a challenge. Something a little lighter and uh, quite dense is East of Eden. Now, I have not read East of Eden in a very long time. I read this, gosh, probably in high school, and I absolutely loved it. I binged it, and it was just beautiful. I am curious to see how I'd feel about it today but I'm always going to regard it as a favorite book uh, just because nothing really captured me like like this. It's a sweeping, if, if you're thinking of the James Dean movie, do not because the James Dean movie is really only like the last third of this book. Moving, sad, and beautif beautifully written. Totally opposite from Absalom Absalom. Steinbeck is very simplified sort of in the Hemingway school of writing. Worth a read if you like big family dramas. Speaking of uh, challenging notorious books, uh, Moby Dick. I have a love-hate relationship with this book, but I'm always going to love it and you know I haven't read it is I've read it like one and a half times maybe two times I can't really remember some of the the passages in this book are just absolutely gorgeous and if you're going to read this book I really recommend getting this modern library with the Rockwell Kent illustrations because Rockwell Kent is a uh, this really adds a lot to this book and there's so many beautiful, beautiful illustrations. This book is so, honestly, it's very ahead of its time. Um, I watched this great review, Books by Lanes, Lanes, I think that's what it's called, her channel, go check it out. But she had this a wonderful review talking about the kind of um, radical perspectives in Moby Dick. It's beautiful, like it's, it's just, it has some of the most amazing writing, the most amazing like, um, monologues that you'll get and it's really unconventional chapters will just turn into a play there's a reason why like everyone talks about it like i i get that it's not like something everyone wants to have on their reading list definitely worth a read and i think everyone should read it uh, once in their life next up and i think this is kind of showing a pattern of what i really love i'm not saying this is a well-rounded list this is just my personal taste but the next one I'm including is one I read quite recently called Butcher's Crossing by John Williams. I've talked about this book a number of times on the channel because it is amazing. Hey, it's being turned into a movie with Nicolas Cage uh, very soon. So it's basically about the brutality and uh, violence of the American West. Uh, similar themes to Moby Dick, I would say. Uh, just this kind of breaking of transcendentalism, this kind of crushing of this idealism of the American West and this mythology that has been crafted. And it's it's a brutal, brutal book that is very, just a very sober view of the events that take place. It's about man versus nature, and it's about man destroying nature, uh, essentially. Same goes with Moby Dick. If you have an aversion to like violence towards animals, just like Moby Dick is all about the uh, industrialized killing of whales, 
Uh, Butcher's Crossing is about the industrialized killing of buffalo. Really, it's just these three guys killing buffalo. The ultimate villain is capitalism, of course, but uh, I can't reveal all of the twists and turns. It is an epic journey of survival. It is intense. It is sad. It is beautifully written. It's God, it's a, it's a perfect book. Do yourself a favor, check it out. It's becoming one of my favorites. Next up is something completely different, and it is Words of Radiance. This is one that really brought me back to my roots, I think, in terms of the, like, the books I love, fantasy. I think it's the best Stormlight book. It's just a really magical, wonderful structure. It has perfect buildup and resolution. It is a blockbuster. It is a, it's a crowd pleaser. It's totally unlike these other books that I've been mentioning. I can't think of a book more different from Absalom Absalom, where Absalom Absalom is dense and confusing and complex and layered. This is broad and epic, masterful plotting. It just fires on every cylinder. It's beautiful. I don't know how I'll feel about it later on, if there will be other books that have like surpassed it in terms of my view of fantasy, but to me, it is my fav probably my favorite fantasy book. Next up, 2001 A Space Odyssey. I haven't read this book in a long time, but it's probably the book I've read more than anything. It was one of the first like really major science fiction books I read, and although technically, people forget that technically it is a novelization of the movie. I think in the book it says it's based on the screenplay by Arthur C. Clarke and Stanley Kubrick. So Arthur C. Clarke is, what happened was Arthur C. Clarke and Stanley Kubrick were writing um, the screenplay and the book at the same time. So there are divergences, um, major ones, but it works as a novelization, but it's also its own thing. And it's beautiful. And Arthur C. Clarke, I think, did some of his, mo his best work um, in this book. Where the movie is kind of cold and really open to interpretation, the novelization, or I should just, the novel is strong authorial presence that is just guiding you through this tale in a very kind of, in a very story-like uh, manner, explores the mythology of this uh, amazing concept. This book, I'm a mega fan. Like I literally, not just this book, but I do love the sequels, uh, not so much 3001, but 2010 and 2061 I think are worth a read. One of my prized possessions is is um, my set. This is a, one of the 2001 books I have, but it's, it's very close to my heart and it always will be. I think I should do a reread of the series again. I don't know if people have any, any, any interest in that, but I, I would definitely like to do that and see how it holds up to me. But uh, regardless, it's always going to be one of, if not my favorite book. But before I get to the next book, let's talk about Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of inspiring classes for creators. Explore new skills, deepen existing passions, and get lost in creativity with Skillshare. I've been really enjoying this, and I bring this up because it's really good. The Writer's Toolkit, Six Steps to a Successful Writing Habit by Simon Van Boy. Great way to help you establish a writing habit if you're the kind of person like me who writes inconsistently. I got a lot from this and I continue to get a lot from this and I am starting to get a better work-life balance and writing habit balance. You can watch uh, in bite-sized videos. It's curated specifically for learning, meaning there are no ads. They are always launching new premium classes so you can stay focused. Skillshare now offers classes in Spanish, French, Portuguese, and German. The first thousand people to click on the link in the description get Skillshare for free for one month. So check it out, learn something new, and uh, yeah. On to the next book. Now, if you all know me, you know that no list uh, like this would be uh, complete without Ray Bradbury. The, the man who shares my birthday, I love Ray Bradbury's optimism. Uh, the way he writes, it's extremely lyrical and some people hate it. It's very flowery, over the top. When you need it, you need it. When you need that nostalgia and that heart, Ray Bradbury is there. There's like these two sides to my favorite books I'm noticing now because I just made this list. Really dark, exploring the darkest parts of humanity and then this total opposite of optimism and looking towards the future. I'll tell my therapist about it. Anyways, Something Wicked This Way comes. I don't think it's perfect. I think it has flaws. It just captures this, this tone, this mood of fall. You know, this whole book really explores what it means to be young, to be young at heart, and uh, friendship. It's so sincere. It's hard to look at it cynically. Some lines in this book are just magnificent. The way it's written, creepy too. There's a lot of creepy and dark darkness in this book. And I think that's what I love about this is this contrast of youth and friendship and danger and fear and anxiety. Uh, I will definitely be rereading it probably this October. Next up is something a little different. And I was debating what to include, but I thought, no, I, I wanna talk about at least something maybe others haven't necessarily heard of. The Waterworks by E.L. Doctorow. This is like a detective 
of novel, and it is written in a kind of style that is reminiscent of Edgar Allan Poe, and it's a very dark science fiction novel. Really brutal, but captivating. It's, it's very unassuming. It has this heart and sadness to it that I really connect with. E.L. Doctorow wrote one of my other favorite novels, Ragtime. Yeah, but The Waterworks is, I don't think enough people are talking about The Waterworks. If you love Ed Edgar Allan Poe, that sort of story, this is a short book, but a uh, great mystery. Check it out. Next up, Blood Meridian. Fun book. I don't know if it's one of my favorite books. It's definitely one of the most hard to classify books, and it really is like a, a spiritual follow-up to Moby Dick. One of the scariest books, really the last hundred pages of this book, are just suspense. Nothing I've seen in movies or anything can compare to the raw fear that the judge uh, gives me. Judge Holden is this character in the book who is described as being like seven feet tall, completely bald, hairless. I think they say his face is like a baby, but like shaped like a baby whale or like a dolphin. Like it's just, he's got these strange, massive features. The, the horrors that existed that were done by the U.S. government, it is a brutal, disturbing horrifying thing. Very, in, in a lot of ways, like Butcher's Crossing, messed up, like imagery that will haunt me to this day, but passages of amazing beauty, like Paradise Lost, uh, illusions uh, are everywhere. I don't really know what to think of it necessarily. I think I want to reread it for sure. It's quite repetitive. If you stick through till like the last 100 pages, then you'll just be sucked in right till the very end. Probably the bloodiest book I've read. It's a book about violence. There's a lot of people who talk about this book, so I don't know what else to really say about it except that it's, yeah, it's a lot. Anyways, to wrap up my top 10, I think this was 10. The Complete Calvin and Hobbes. I have this set in the other room. It's huge. It weighs like 50 pounds. I, I don't know. It's not like something I would traditionally include. I just feel like if I'm talking about books that are incredibly important to me and always will be, and like, why should I not include Calvin and Hobbes? Talk about one of the best books ever. Amazing humor, life lessons, artwork that is beautiful, imagination. It's truly timeless. That's what I have to say about Calvin and Hobbes. It's great. All right, my voice is getting kind of sore. I got that off my chest. Uh, I'm sure I'm missing so many books that I will, as soon as I finish recording, will go, why didn't I talk about this? But let me know, like, what's going on? What you want me to read? I mean, I'm, not, I'm open to suggestions. Yeah, again, oh, Woman Carrying Man, go check that out. Yeah, thank you for watching, everyone. Bye.